Bud, what has come in the post? Is it another large box from Anycubic? You would like to jump inside this box, wouldn't you? Looks like this is the Anycubic Cobra Plus. So I'm guessing this is somewhere between the Cobra and the Max as far as size is concerned. Okay, it's a little different. That's interesting. It's got a build plate like the Max. So it looks like this is going to be closer in its DNA to the Max than to the regular Cobra. Accessory packet. Hmm. It's like a fairly large frame. Is the extruder in a fixed position? Looks like it is. Oh, is that what's the thing called from Tron? The rec recognizer or whatever? Another any cubic screen. Yes. Oh, it's got a secret compartment door on it again. Yes. Oh, there we go. Hope you're not over there, bud. Geronimo! <laughs> so this is the Cobra Plus, and this is the just Cobra regular. The build platform is quite a bit larger, probably a good 33% larger, but it, it looks, I don't know, it's weird. It, it, it's much closer to that Max printer, that really big one. Yeah, this big one was the Cobra Max. It seems like it's closer in DNA to this Cobra Max because of the extruder type and the bed type. And like the Max, I need to actually remember to cut this big zip tie out from under the bed. Looks like assembly is mostly the same. You put the mainframe into here where there's some notches. I don't think they had those notches before, so that actually helps quite a bit to align it. And then you fix it with these 50 millimeter screws. Now, make sure this plugs out of the way. Wait, that's... Yeah, that's gotta be right, right? Yeah, this has to be forward. Kind of a tight fit. The, um, <clears throat> the bed itself goes quite close to the frame. So I put in one screw per side. So I went, went bump, 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 bump like that. Just to make sure that I'm not torquing one side too much before the other. I've noticed there seems like a lot more uh, zip ties on this thing than previous Anycubic printers. I wonder if they had some issues with things moving in shipment. Let's make sure there's no extraneous detritus on the plate so everything goes nice and flat. Mm, probably not. Oh yeah, this has two Z drives on it. Okay, so that's different than the Cobra regular. Do you ever have that thing? I know this is so stupid, but like you go to the gas station and it says regular and if you're old enough, that makes you think it has lead in it. Surely I can't be the only person triggered by that. Apparently leaded gasoline is still used in some places. I wonder why it was used in the first place. Maybe as a lubricant? Shut up, phone. You're going to give me a copyright strike for my ringtone. Susan's like, I can hear it in the background. Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? A chance, a chance, a chance not to pay. We must take them every day. We must take them every day. Ba -ba 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 -bum. Oh, I get the clip on and apparently it's in the wrong place. It's only supposed to be in the front and the back. Makes sense because see how there's a wider margin there with the white lines? Name one other YouTube who can procedurally generate Christmas songs about YouTube's policies. I'll wait! I just double checked against the large Max printer in the other room and yeah, these, these clips were much tighter to put on. I wonder if that's some sort of feedback. I, did they have problems with the other ones coming loose? Why are there two plugs here? Oh wait, they're different sizes. One, the larger one must be for the screen. What's the other one for? Another change I've noticed versus the other printers is this one seems to have be including lots of extra screws. Like the three screws that put on the screen here, there's actually two baggies of them. So I guess maybe people were losing screws. So in medieval times, if you were like a merchant and you shorted a customer, it was a very serious crime. The punishment for shorting a customer was so severe 
the bakers would be like, okay, instead of giving you a, a dozen loaves, I'm going to give you 13 loaves. That way there's no way you can accuse me of shortchanging you. Hence, a baker's dozen. Such insane customer protections would not be seen again for many centuries until the advent of PayPal. And still filament holder, all right. Goes on the left, just like the other ones. Oh, here we go, ASMR. Hey, they've improved the drawings for hooking up the cables a little bit. See, they actually have drawings now. Then over here, they have a white background behind the blue text. That's an improvement. Did they take my advice? I don't know. This part could be a little bit more straightforward. They have this through this holder, but it doesn't really go into the motor very easily if you do that. Also, it's weird that they have the um, the ports on the motor on the inside, not sticking out the back. Seems like that's kind of more difficult to use because then you have to like stick your hands in here like this. So that's Z left. So it's labeled ZL, but so is this, even though this is clearly for the limit switch over here. So maybe it should have been like ZL motor, ZL switch. So you've got the sliding cable management that goes into the extrusion. In this case, I had to unravel a little bit and then come around here to attach the Z right connector. So I think in the instructions, they should have made a note about, you know, move this left and right or move it back and forth and then, you know, use it for cable management. Again, like they make a lot of this like really, really easy, but then something like this, if it's like, oh, it's over here, but the cable won't reach, why won't it? Oh, does it slide? These two cables should be labeled better or I, sh I should say they should be labeled at all. Look how they're almost identical in size. So I've been, I've been building and working with 3D printers for geez, at least 12 years now. So if something slows me down for a minute, it would probably slow a novice down for a lot longer than that. Oh yeah, see, that one looks like it would fit, but then it didn't. So then this one goes all the way over here to the extruder. All right, so we're going to use these to lash this to the Bowden tube. Well, this isn't a direct drive either. Yeah, it's weird. This, this, so this is this is more like a smaller Max than a larger Cobra. And then when I edit this, I'm going to be like, Dear Lord, Ben, you said that like three times already. All right, so I need to do some cable management with this. I think I'm going to add like one more zip tie. It's weird. They only gave you two of these twist tie things. So this needs to go through here. I'm going to boot the machine up and raise up the Z using the controls before I continue. I think we're ready for first boot. How about that? I am not Canadian. Oh crap, I forgot to set the voltage to 115 using the switch in the back because America. That's probably why I didn't boot up immediately. All right. Let's go into tools. Move axes, 10 millimeters, Z up. So I'm just gonna go all the way up and then do my cable management from there. This thing has a pretty good Z height relevant to its XY size. Nice. I can print a big vase. Oh, I should mention that any Cubic Max printer, the really large one, that came in super handy because I was doing a prop for a local production company. Here's a photo of it here, and here's another photo of it here. It's a character that has a flower pot for a head. Anyway, yeah, I wouldn't have been able to print that in one in one piece if I had, if it weren't for that large printer. I wouldn't have got away with it if it weren't for you large printers. Wow, they included two zip ties. My ship has come in. And now for my favorite part, putting all the stuff into the extra bin. We've got a nozzle cleaner, some grease, an SD card that we actually need. Oh, it even com comes with an extra pair of, of uh, side cutters, extra nozzle, extra screws, and of course, the Allen wrenches. I love this drawer. That's like my favorite feature. I wish all other printers had this drawer. So far, only this one and the Viper have it. That's the thing, I, okay, something I definitely find confusing about this company is their printer line seems a little inconsistent with the features. Prepare leveling, auto leveling. Prepare leveling. Use a tool to touch printer nozzle to calibrate leveling sensor. I still haven't quite figured out exactly how this works. So, okay, here's a tool. So it's gonna do the multi-point leveling now. I think it does like 16 points. So this will probably take about 10 minutes. 
Seems like I've made this video a million times because I have. So what it's doing is it's using the sensor to create a map of how the Z depth of the bed varies across the surface of the bed. Then it uses that data and it puts it into its internal memory so that in the future, as it runs, it'll automatically adjust the Z depth of the print based off the inaccuracies it finds on the bed. Mesh leveling, yay. Uh, while this runs, I'm going to set up Cura. It's going to be the same as always. The SD card that came with the unit, it's very important that you keep it because it actually has the settings on it for Cura for whatever printer you just bought. And in my case, this printer hasn't been released yet, so that SD card is the only way I'm going to get the profiles. So I'll get that started while this levels. Okay, let's load some filament. Well, let's see. I think it's prepare, filament, filament in. Yeah, you've got the pinch wheel here, and this adjusts the, the strength of it. But if you do this, you can open up the pinch wheel manually without the motor running. So, see, I, I put the filament up, it bumps into it. Then I open this up, and then I can push it through, unless I can't. Oh, is it not lined up? Oh, there it goes. Okay. Now I'm going to push it all the way through. I don't know if you can see that color change. So it's just going to keep extruding until you hit stop. I put one of my standard accessibility controller parts on the SSD card. Okay, another small nitpick. So I know that based off the way this USB port is connected that the SD card is going to go in upside down. But does your grandma know that? So maybe a little sticker here that says SD card, you know, sticker side, so you know which way it goes in. Because what if you're like, why doesn't it work? Also, the, uh, the circuit board, when I was looking at it, there is a landing pad for a full-size SD card. I, I, I would prefer a full-size SD card. It's just easier to use. All right, got some gray filament, print, analog cap G-code. Says it's going to take 28 minutes. Well, the stepper motors are basically silent, so I assume it's using a, what is it, TMC2208 Trinamic driver. I just, I wish the fans would be quiet. I mean, the only thing that makes noise on these machines now are the fans. It's like, it's like my laser cutter. The blower fan makes 90% of the noise and it also uses like 80% of the power. This is using the recommended settings that again came on the SD card. So don't throw away the SD card that comes with one of these printers. The SD card also contains the full instruction. So it's basically this setup guide plus how to get started with Cura. Oh, hey, I was uh, pretty close in my guesses to the print size. It's uh, 302 millimeters, which is just under 12 inches. And the vertical print size is 395. Again, that information is provided on the PDF version of this on the SD card. So save your SD card, find the PDF file, and save the cheerleader, and then the world is safe or something. Is there a scraper? They gave me this plastic scraper. Okay. Build time was higher than the estimate. I think it was about 35 minutes. Um, the first surface looks pretty good. Actually, I'm going to print something else that's going to take about two hours. And then we'll take a closer look at both of the objects with the overhead cam. I've got some black filament loaded. I'm going to print one of these. This is for my single-handed controller, for PlayStation 4. It's a larger print, so let's see how it does. I'm, I'm especially interested about the bottom surface. This was uh, glass and glue. It's not the prettiest surface, so let's see how this machine does, making a nice smooth surface. Rear composite right, and go. Let's take a closer look at this one while the next one prints. Remember, you can see it closer than I can because of the camera angle. There are some zits on the side. It's not too bad. And a little something under there. That's probably a layer change. Um, the thing that I think is actually pretty cool, shows you that the bed leveling was pretty accurate, was there you could actually see the, the chamfer. Chamfering is good because it, well, like if you have like, let, let's say you print something like that, and this is the table right here, you the first layer get kind of squished, like the elephant's foot is what they call it, kind of goes like out like that. But if you print something that's chamfered, 
that tends to be hidden a little bit more because it's actually the, any elephant foot it is inside of it. And you can see that here, there is a little bit of elephant footing, but the shame fur is actually quite visible. Let me grab, yeah, you can see the, uh, the texture of the boral silicate glass reproduced into the bottom. Yeah, this is a pretty good squished first layer. You can see, you can see the individual lines. Yeah, there's a good angle. You can see the individual lines, but they're squashed to a point where they all meet up to each other, like they flowed next to each other. If you have the Z2 open, you'll actually see like ridges, like it won't be this well squished. So kind of the holy grail is to have a good squish, but not so much that you have an elephant foot. So this thing seems like it leveled pretty well. Uh, here's a 3D print preview of an upcoming project. This is going to be a miniaturized Atari Lynx handheld because the Atari Lynx was like a surfboard in size. So I'm going to make it smaller. So stay tuned for that. Okay, here's the case. Kind of a lot of stringing going on in it. I'm not sure what that's all about. I guess Kira decided that he needed support material there even though it's a 45 degree slope. I guess I could take the time to learn Kira. I could like work on it every night and it would be Kira nightly. Uh, I'll be here all week, try the veal. I think it could maybe benefit from being a little bit more squished on the Z. I should be able to adjust that in the software. Yeah, I think it would be, the Z would be ever so slightly lower. I believe you can just change the offset. Oh, did it fill on the screw hole too? Come on. Come on, Kira. Have some sense and sensibility when it comes to placing these supports. <laughs> when you hide supports like this, it becomes a phantom menace. There's also a lot of like Nazca lines going on in here. Nazca lines. The lines drawn by the ancient Incas to please the gods. Indy, maybe the gods were aliens. Don't be ridiculous, short round. There's no such thing as aliens. Can you imagine how lame it would be if I ever came across an alien? I downloaded a plugin for Kira, uh, Selective Support, which you'd think would be built in because I just wanted support for this portion here. So this is with a slightly uh, thicker Z. You can still see it's not like perfectly smooth. I guess it probably never would be. I can feel a little bit of an elephant's foot. So I don't think I'd want to make it more compressed than this. I think part of the issue is that when the filament is traveling these long distances, maybe it just tends to rise up or, you know, just doesn't have good enough adhesion. I wonder, are you, can, well, I mean, you can use, I've used uh, glue sticks on glass beds like that before, like the, when I was printing things on the Anycubic Max, I would. I wish they would release a new version of Simplify 3D. It's allegedly supposed to come out. I, I would pay $150 for it again. It's just because it's the software I know. I'm sure Kira can do all the same things, but I'm just not used to it. All right, so this goes here. This is a PlayStation 4 single-handed controller. This is one of the secondary triggers. So I added that part there so the trigger can't move too far in that direction. Now mechanically it seems to fit. All right, um, why don't we try printing something really tall with this printer? What was it, 350 millimeters total height? Like a tall vase or something? They also sent me some rainbow filament they want me to use, so let's give that a try. Here's the rainbow filament. Now I already tried printing something with it, although the colors don't change that often, which is a little bit weird. But let's see what happens when we print a vase. It's probably gonna be about, I don't know, six inches tall. It'll take about two hours. Looks like it's starting out well enough. Guess we'll see how fast the colors change as it goes up. Oh, this looks cool. It, it doesn't really look rainbowy. It looks more like kind of like, like a metallic uh, purple or something. Also, as far as the time is concerned, I think Kira said like two and a half hours. This thing has already been running two and a half hours at 55%, so that estimate wasn't very accurate. Oh, it'll probably be done by the end of the work day. Well, this is silk, which I assume is because of shiny. PLA Plus, 
and the color is rainbow, although I'm not getting a lot of rainbow out of it. Hmm, the table's still pretty warm. It must have just finished. It's on there pretty good. While I wait for this to cool, I'd like to say these uh, Anycubics where it has the pressure sensor for the nozzle, I think I actually prefer that versus the Cobra which had the inductive sensor because with that printer you then have to manually adjust the Z offset with a piece of paper in order to get it right and I was uh, working with that working with that, with that printer last night I was like oh I can put it upstairs there we go and I had a heck of a time getting the the Z to stick but this printer just pretty much worked the first time um, for my preference, I think something like this Viper, which I reviewed several months ago, might be the best because you've got the PEI and you've got the pressure sensor. It's the best of both worlds. I really do like the PEI bed, although sometimes it is, it is sometimes trickier to get stuff to stick to it because the bed surface is not perfectly even, but I love how easy it is to remove afterwards because... Well, it comes off easily anyway, but even if it doesn't, you can pick up and flex the bed and pop it off, just like ice cubes. I wonder if this model is watertight. Yeah, it's a little leaky at the bottom. I better save this water. Pure dirt! Five kilos! Where did you come by so much of it? There's a lot of different colors, but you must have to print a very large object before you see any appreciable, you know, shift in color. This looks like something a witcher would drink out of. Throw a coin to your witcher. I designed, like, some art. It's gonna be like, I don't know, a foot tall? I'm gonna print it with this rainbow filament. I guess we'll see how it turns out. Whoa, look at this! It looks like the Emerald City from uh, Wizard of Oz. Oh, that came right off the base, easy peasy. That surface isn't super great. Now granted, these are all hollow, so it doesn't take as much filament as it would have if it was solid or had infill. Still, I mean, it looks cool, but man, like look how slowly that filament changed. And it really only made one change. It went from green to orange. So I wonder if they have like different spools of this and maybe change their color faster because on smaller objects, you're not going to see that much of a color change, or, or like this, like you went from like pink to somewhat orange. All right, I'm printing a 3D Benchy at standard size using the shiny rainbow filament. It'll probably take about an hour and a half. It's 0.2 millimeter layer height, which Kira considers to be draft, but I don't know. I consider that to be nice quality. See, f for me with 3D printing, I use it a lot for doing my accessibility controllers, you know? So for me, it's more about throughput than super high resolution quality. As long as the part is strong, that's what I care about. I rarely print things at 0.1 millimeter, unless it's like something really small where I want it to be fairly solid, solid like a D-pad or something. It's looking pretty good. I do see some lumps on that side. Okay, the Benchy is finished. One hour, 38 minutes print time. Well, that time Kira was almost right on. Kira said one hour, 30 minutes. Hmm. I wonder what, what causes that discrepancy. The stair stopping on the top of it, I think is made more obvious by the fact this filament is so shiny. You have a few zits here. And then something's going on there. Let's check the bottom. Okay, the text is readable. I think the first layer could be, we could probably under crank it a little bit. There's a little bit of a elephant's foot. Yeah, see that right there? I think this is supposed to be some text, but I don't think it'd be readable unless we blow up the model, which I think I'm going to do in the next iteration. I think I'm going to print a 200% version of this. I'm going to reduce the initial Z. So I think that's a little bit too much elephant foot. Let's compare this to some Benchies from other Anycubic printers I've looked at. This one does seem to have a deviation in the same area. I'll, I'll just zoom in on it digitally. Yeah, as far as the overhang, it's it's pretty consistent. So the, sh the shiny material exaggerates rough edges much better because of the light. Looking at the bottom, we can see a marked, a marked difference. 
Of course, this is with a um, PEI bed. See the texture? Versus this one, see how the stroke with the letters is thicker on this? So I did I did start another print. I'm going to do another one, one of these at 150% size. I adjusted the Z offset, but the granularity was, it was only like 0.05, so it was like, it, it was only in chunks of 0.05. I guess if that's 0.05 millimeters, that's a pretty small amount, but it was like, it was set at negative 0.05, and then the next lightest setting I could do was no offset at all, zeros. I mean, this filament is very cool. You know, when I had to buy a, another car recently, yeah, to, much to my chagrin, I had to let go of my Ford Focus, and it struck me how every car on the road is like three colors, black, white, or gray. And I'm like, oh, this sucks. Like, there's no colors to cars anymore, but apparently colored cars are harder to sell. But then I realized, what are the three most common filament colors I buy for my stuff? White, black, and gray. And then I shook my fists at the sky and said, no! Oh yeah, look at that. You can see a reflection. Reflections of the way life used to be. Yeah, take a look at how much clearer the stroke is on the text of this one. Of course, the part's a lot bigger. But uh, I'm sure that Z change is helping. I'm going to monitor this for a little bit, make sure it stays stuck, and then I will then I will wander off and ignore it for three hours. Now, there we go. Once again, the uh, time was very close to the estimate. I guess that's what I get for using the recommended settings. <clears throat> and it's stuck on there pretty good. Here is the bigger benchy. Looks like we do have some zits on the side. Let's check the text on the bottom. It's more clear, although that could be because the text is larger. You know, you just you know, easier to print larger text. There's still a little bit of a lip. So I'm not sure if adjusting the Z really did all that much. This text is still still too small to resolve. The steering wheel in there. Yeah, bud, I know, you're sad. Yeah, you can see the infill there. That could be avoided with more outer walls. I think what I'll do is maybe try the same model, but with a more standard filament and see what the results are like. This is Silk PLA Plus, which I guess is supposed to be a stronger type of PLA. I wonder if the temperature needs to be a little bit higher. Here's the same file with black filament. We still have that stitching effect right there. That was a lot less obvious with the black. I wonder why it's in the same place. Still a little, bit, a little bit of a lip on the bottom. I could probably try reducing that a little bit, but I think it's more important that the part sticks than having zero elephant's foot. Overhang is about the same. Maybe a little less overhang on that rear port there. See the steering wheel inside? This looks a little, a little cleaner than the um, rainbow filament. I'm kind of wondering, since that's PLA+, plus, maybe there's some tweaks that I need to be doing to the profile to make it uh, to make it work better because this is just bog standard PLA and all right I'm printing a four corner test basically to see how flat the bed is on all four corners an innovation I would love to see or rather hear or rather not hear with 3d printers are quieter fans the fan is like 99% of the noise of course if you have like a silent fan it's gonna be a lot more money and fans are already kind of expensive components I saw this really cool printer, I think it was at Murph 2016. It was a Delta printer, and the build surface was ceramic with Peltiers under it. And then the entire frame of the printer was uh, brass or copper. And when the print finished, it inversed the current of the Peltiers, so they pulled heat away from the ceramic surface and dumped it into the, uh, into the copper frame. So the surface got super cold like an anti-griddle. And it got so, you know, so it got cold, basically. Um, and then you could actually, like, just blow, you could, like, go and, like, blow the part off with breath. So there are ways to make printers silent. It's just they're kind of expensive. Are you looking for something to destroy? Like something hanging from the ceiling? Yeah, we got we to gotta do some work in this secret lair in a few weeks. We're going to make my niece help us, aren't we? When I first moved in, before I put anything in the basement, I cleaned the walls with acid and then painted them with uh, sealant but then there were some spots where the water still came through so that told me where to fix the drainage outside the house and now there haven't been any more bubbles so I'm gonna move everything like this laser and whatnot 
then re-acid the walls and then repaint them. And then in the spring, I can see how well the drainage has improved by the hopeful lack of new bubbles. Right, bud? I just remembered I have to drive past my mom's next week because I have to pick up my niece. Maybe I should give this to her and I'll say, oh, it's, it's art. And she'll be like, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, I'll put it by my 28 plants. See, this wall, this is the south side of the house. That was the last drainage improvement that I did. I guess I could show it to you while we wait for this print. Yeah, this is the outside wall. So the laser's right down there. And for some reason, everyone in this neighborhood has foam covering their basement windows. I want to make like a nice wood cover for that. But yeah, so I dug a trench, like an L-shaped trench all the way out there. And there's a pop-up drain somewhere. There it is. So this is the south wall. Yeah, so there's, oh, there's like a rose or something. So now there's a pipe buried in the ground all the way across here. So I had to dig out most of this flower bed, but I put the flowers back, although a little haphazardly. So this one's kind of hanging, I don't know what kind of flower that is. And then this vine is trying to eat my gas. I got this creeping thing. Uh, I don't know what these things are. Oh, this this is this is the same as that. Is that chrysanthemum? Yeah. So then, what I did is that French drain connects to the downspout there, then goes underground. Then there's all this that got dug up, trying to grow the grass back, and there's another outlet drain. I had to be careful with that because the property line's right there, so I had to make sure. I would have liked to put it over there, but that's not my property, so I'm going to trespass. Nope, I'm trespassing on camera. At some point this summer, I need to pull out that edging and actually build up like a nice uh, rock wall for this flower bed. You know, digging the ditch was the first part. There's still some parts of the grass that are that were killed by all the dirt being flown around. But yeah, see, these flowers are kind of coming out too far, so I'll probably put the blocks like right around here. That'll make up for the fact that the flowers seem to be creeping out into the yard. If I had to sum up first time home ownership in three words, so much digging. Oh, I should label these. One, two, three, four, five. Edge feels pretty good. There's a little bit of an elephant's foot, but not too much. We can see the texture of the bed. And I don't see any obvious gaps. There'd be almost a little bit of a gap right there. But it's done a pretty good job of both having a flat surface and also not being so squished that there's an elephant's foot. This was the far back left corner. Could be a little bit more of an elephant's foot right here and here. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah it probably shows up on camera, doesn't it? This is the center. Still pretty consistent. It's kind of weird how you can see the center. You know what that maybe? Well, that's the longest area. Maybe it cools at a different rate because there's less time. Well, there's more time, I should say. See, this would be like. So this one doesn't have that stripe in the middle. Yeah. So I would say the, um, the quarters aren't all exactly the same. Of course, they're not going to be even with mesh leveling, but this took up pretty much the entire print area. I'm trying to think of what else I could print with this. Well, they gave me that rainbow filament, which I'm probably not gonna use for anything because I'm not really into art and stuff and color. Oh, there's a new Jurassic Park movie coming out. Oh, I'm sorry, Jurassic World movie coming out. Maybe I could print a dinosaur skull. So again, the cure profile time was pretty accurate, 2.5 hours. This is like a giant raptor claw. You printed raptors? Yes, we printed raptors. Welcome to Jurassic Park World. This model had some supports built into the design, so I just printed it as is. But then you look over to your left and realize there's another six foot chicken. And you say, clever girl. This is a super raptor. This is like, in the new movie, it's, it's super raptor. Where are the kids? I happen to be vegan. 
Yeah, this printed pretty well. But again, even this large part, it's pretty much all the same color. Oh, it's one of those things from Life Force. It's 10% uh, infill. Yeah, I like how you can see all the surface detail of the bones. Well, you know, dinosaur bones aren't bones. They're, they're fossilized bones, which means they're rock that took the shape of bones. The bones that turned into rock. So now we've looked at all three of the Cobra printers from any cubic. So there's the Cobra, the Cobra Plus, which is this one, and the Cobra Max. And it seems like the Cobra Plus, the one that's on screen right now, it seems like it's it's more it's more similar to a smaller version of the Cobra Max than the Cobra Regular because it has the same extruder as the Max and also the same kind of borosilicate build plate. As for what printer you might want for your uses, it, again, it depends on what you want to print. Now, if you just want to like play around with 3D printers and get started, I would suggest getting a small, cheaper 3D printer. As far as the plus here, it's basically between the Cobra and the Max. It's just the plus, like Disney plus or C plus plus. Now, I enjoy these uh, PEI beds that have the texture and then you can flex the bed, but it does seem like it, it does take a little bit more work to zero it in to make the first layer stick. I didn't have any adhesion problems with this printer. I mean, I zed it once, I did the mesh leveling once, and everything I printed stayed in place perfectly well. As you can see here, I have used glue sticks on glass for some of the larger things I printed with the Cobra Max. That, that's a nice little bit of insurance to have, but on paper you shouldn't need that, and I didn't need it with the Cobra Plus. And I've complained about this with the previous Anycubics, and I will again. The micro SD card slot, like, again, why do you need a micro SD card slot? Why not have a full-size SD card slot? Easier to use and harder to lose. Hey, that rhymed. Let's talk about the pros and cons with the Anycubic Cobra Plus printer. Okay, starting with the pros. Easy setup and accurate leveling. All these printers have been pretty easy to set up, but it, I did seem to have more luck getting the Z-Level to work with this printer than with the regular Cobra printer that I last reviewed. So I would say that's a plus since the last one that I reviewed. Obviously, you can print larger objects with this printer. That's also good. And you, you might be saying, oh, you can print larger objects with the Cobra Max. Well, the Cobra Max also costs more money and takes up a pretty huge footprint on your desk or work area. And something that I can talk about now that I've reviewed a number of these Anycubic printers is that they all have a consistent interface. Obviously, most people aren't going to be <laughs> running four of these in a row like I am, but I appreciate the fact that the interface is pretty much the same all the time. Although, as I mentioned, the Z leveling was different for the Cobra regular. So on some cons, I wish these Anycubic printers would print faster. I've built custom printers before and I know you can make them run faster. Yeah, maybe you might take some hints, hits on quality, but there's many occasions where I would prefer that it just prints faster. It seems like it's locked to 80 millimeters a second, which I think is kind of on the slow side these days. I have seen new printers out there that are coming to the market that actually are a lot faster than that. So I would like it if any cubic adjusted their firmware to raise the ceiling on that so we can get a little bit more speed. Because when you try to raise it in Cura, it doesn't seem to affect print time at all. Uh, filament load and unload is still a little janky on these printers. The problem that I have, well, there's a, there's a filament sensor in the rear that basically senses if the filament's there. But it doesn't sense if there's a snag. And then the, uh, the Bowden extruder, sometimes it can be uh, difficult when you push the filament in. I mean, you saw me doing this earlier in the, uh, in the video. You push the filament in, it might not quite go all the way. It might not go quite in straight enough to go into the tube. So sometimes you have to kind of like do, 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 poke around a little bit. So that part could be a little bit better versus the Cobra regular where it was a direct drive system. So you basically put the filament right into the hot end and boom, there you go. And then, you know, me being Mr. Pedantic, I don't like the micro SD slot. This isn't a GoPro or a cell phone or whatever else would need a micro SD card. This is a big honking printer. So why not make it a little easier by having a full size SD card? Well, there you go. We did an unboxing and assembly of the Anycubic Cobra Plus. We tried out a variety of different prints. Pretty good print quality. The borosilicate uh, glass bed, although it might seem a bit primitive, seems to work just fine. 
and this printer has the modern Trinamic stepper motor drivers, which makes the stepper motors nice and quiet and cool. I just wish the fans were as quiet as the motor drivers were. This can be a good printer if you if you know that you're going to want to print larger things, but not giant things like the Cobra Max would be used for. If you're just getting started with 3D printers, I think this one would probably be a bit more than you need. And you might find a PEI bed more forgiving in some circumstances. Although this glass bed, I didn't have any adhesion problems with and I didn't even need to use glue. It just seemed to, it just worked. Well, I hope you enjoyed that 3D printer review. Stay tuned, and in the meantime, happy 3D printing.